Gary, Indiana, once a thriving town, was on the rise to becoming a rich and dynamic community. Sitting just 30 miles southeast of Chicago along Lake Michigan, Gary was founded in 1906 by the U.S. Steel Corporation as the new home site for their latest plant, Gary Works. Gary Works not only built an impressive state-of-the-art plant, they paved the way for the city of Gary to see remarkable development and growth within its first 26 years. Life in Gary seemed to hold endless opportunities and a bright future for its new residents. In February of 2015, Diamond Bynum, a young woman from Hammond, Indiana, moved the 10 miles into nearby Gary. There, she settled in with her father, Eugene, and her stepmother, Suzanne. The move allowed Diamond even more time with her older sister and her young nephew, who spent each weekend at her new home. He would come over on Friday nights, and what we would do is uh, stay up, play, look at TV, whatever. She loved Ken. She loved to take care of him how, how she can, the way she can. But she would feed him and change his diaper and stuff like that. On July 25th, 2015, Diamond, King, and Suzanne, who was home with the pair, spent their Saturday just like any other Saturday. They enjoyed breakfast, spent time together inside, then all laid down for a nap around 10.20 that morning. And Diamond was already laying down um, in my room. So I went and um, put King beside me in the bed. They fell asleep, and when she woke up, she found that Diamond and the baby had left the house. Diamond and King's disappearance went beyond the typical worry when a loved one can't be found. For their families, it plunged them into a profound sense of dread. Despite being 21 and a loving and devoted babysitter for her two-year-old nephew, Diamond faced unique challenges. Born with Prader-Willi syndrome, which affected Diamond's rational thinking and problem solving, she also had to navigate life with a speech impairment, asthma, a bowed leg which caused difficulty walking, and hyperphagia a disorder which causes an insatiable sense of hunger. Although Diamond had a sense of independence in the safety of her home, her intellectual capacity was similar to that of a five to seven-year-old, requiring regular supervision and assistance with daily tasks. While Diamond had the freedom to go for short walks alone in Hammond, she hadn't yet learned her new neighborhood in Gary. Neighbors in Hammond knew Diamond and were aware of her unique circumstances, thus always happy to help keep an eye on her. The uncharted territory and lack of connections with her new neighbors in Gary, however, meant she wasn't yet allowed to go out for walks without a trusted adult with her, which made her sudden disappearance that much more concerning for her family. Speculations arose that Diamond might have left the home in search of food, something that happened often while in Hammond. Reports came forward that a pair that could have been Diamond and King were spotted getting food at a nearby McDonald's. When authorities were called in to search, search dogs traced their scents to a gas station instead, and although a witness confirmed seeing them there, surveillance cameras failed to pick up any sight of them. Many believe the pair left the home together and eventually wandered into an abandoned building in the area. Once a thriving city, Gary had turned a drastic corner by the 1960s when the steel industry's overseas expansion led to countless layoffs at Gary Works. Unemployed workers and residents began leaving the city in large numbers, leaving an overwhelming amount of vacant homes in their place. By 2015, after losing more than 60% of its population, Gary was well on its way to becoming a ghost town. Given the dangerous condition of the remaining structures, it's feared Diamond and King could have been trapped or injured inside one of the abandoned homes. If they did venture into the neighborhood, there's an unsettling possibility they encountered an opportunistic predator which could have taken them outside of Gary altogether. At the time of his disappearance, King, a happy and joyful two-year-old, loved to run and be chased by his family members throughout the house. Diamond, who was 21 when the pair went missing, loved to smile and take care of her loved ones. She she likes to help people out who are less fortunate than her, I per se. If they need their coat put on, she'd be the one to put the coat on them. Due to her prader willi syndrome, she often went to great lengths to obtain food, often sneaking it from stores or restaurants. Despite numerous setbacks and what the family perceives are significant failures by the authorities, they hold strong that Diamond and King are still alive. Whether still in Gary, nearby Chicago, or even on the other side of the country, they navigate each day with the hope that the next phone call will be Diamond, phoning with her infectious smile and King by her side, 
the two ready to be reunited with their loved ones. You never give up. You never give up on my son. Daddy and Papa, he loves you, he misses you, and he's doing everything in his power to bring you both back home. Call Daddy, Diamond. Get to a phone and call Daddy. 